All right, let's get into some fantasy football talk. Uh, reports coming out. Adam Schefter said it. Jamar Chase, he's in a hold-in, not a holdout, in a hold-in with the Cincinnati Bengals. Could affect his availability week one of the season because after three years showing he's a top three receiver in the league, and it's all about the guaranteed money for these guys, he does not want to step foot on the field, and he's dealt with his own injuries as well, until he gets that money. Let's look at this from the fantasy football perspective, Travis, because I think that's what's big. As someone that's a proud owner of the fourth overall pick, let me tell you time and time again, it was Jamar Chase and number four overall who I was targeting. Does this affect him in your eyes, how you look at him from a fantasy perspective, especially with the drafts coming up? <clears throat> Absolutely not. Listen, I am the best person to ask this, and I'll tell you why. Practical experience. I just dealt with this last season for my draft. I took two players who are not available till like week four of the season. And the reason I took them, I, I, you know, I didn't take them first pick, but I took them higher than most people had them on their board. And the reason I did it is because I knew the season is a marathon, not a sprint. So the two players were Jonathan Taylor at running back and Kyler Murray at quarterback. I took them both and I stashed them. Funny thing happened, George. All my team sucked the first, you know, four or five weeks of the season. I'm bottom of the barrel. I wasn't in last place, but I was close. And then as the season progressed, oh, hmm. oh, what do you know? Kyler Murray starts putting up numbers. Oh, what's this? Jonathan Taylor has his legs back under him, and he looks like, you know, Jonathan Taylor, one of the best backs in the league. And then you look up. And I'm in the playoffs. Now, I didn't win it. I didn't win it. But I blame Nick Chubb getting hurt. I had some other things going on. But look, I made the playoffs. So when I see stuff like this, I don't give a damn. If anything, I hope everyone panics on Jamar Chase, on C.D. Lamb, who's going through a similar situation. I hope everybody panics. Don't take them early. Just let them be out there. You don't want to deal with that. Good. So I can draft them and win my league. I, it doesn't concern me at all, George. The only one, Brandon Ayuk, is one that where I'm like, okay, but it's only because he's not a generational talent like Jamar Chase and like C.D. Lamb. Those two, I don't give a damn what drama is going on. I will draft them and wait as long as I need to because I know when they step on the field, I know what's going to happen. Dominance. Staying as far away from Jamar Chase as possible. Because with the top five pick, that's where he's going. This affects the people with the four to seven pick range. Because there are a lot of possibilities that Jamar Chase would be their first overall pick in the draft. Jonathan Taylor, Kyler Murray, those are later rounds. That's four, fifth, sixth, seventh round. At that point, I agree with the long play. Someone's injured, someone's suspended, someone may be questionable. Week one, they fall in a draft because of that. Grab them and stash them, and you can fill it in later. Especially the wide receiver position, it's deep. But Jamar Chase is going to be the first guy off the board after CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, and Amon Ross St. Brown in some order like that way. Because they are the tier one pass catchers. CeeDee Lamb's a focal point of that offense, and he has Dak Prescott. Tyreek Hill is the best receiver, not named Justin Jefferson in the league, but has Tua Tungo Vailoa in that system and can lead the league in receiving this upcoming season. Jamar Chase... With Tyler Boyd now gone, it's Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, but no matter what, Jamar Chase at his peak with Joe Burrow on the field is a top three receiver. But if he's been holding in, I wish he was holding out. I wish he was doing his workouts while the Bengals are practicing, going 100% and training and being in football shape. But if you take him with a top four pick, you're going to be behind because there is the worry of getting into football shape, how in shape and what his, you know, conditioning will be. And that's going to be soft tissue injuries. We've seen time and time again from guys that hold in or hold out in the past, not doing the same thing, ramping up in training camp and it affects them. And they're never right in that following season. So I'm staying away from Jamar Chase. If you have picks four, five or six, I would stay away from him. I would stick with CeeDee Lamb because I think something's going to be resolved. That's a guy that's been working out on the side and getting it done. But I yeah. agree. Staying away from Brandon Ayuk as well. Because if you get him in a second round, third round, there are still valuable pass catchers there. And if he ends up in Pittsburgh where that offense has looked terrible, oh. terrible, 
I don't trust that. If he sticks in San Francisco, congrats. You get him in the third round, you got a great value pick there. There's a risk, there's a reward, but it depends where these guys are going. So if I'm staying away from Javar, Jamar Chase, I mentioned it, it was the first name that came to mind. If you're sitting in a spot, you're picking four or five, you're going to have options. It'll be Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, or Justin Jefferson. It should be two of those three receivers that are looking at you. Last yeah. year, Justin Jefferson caught passes from Kirk Cousins, Nick Mullins, Josh Jobs, and Darren Hall, averaged over averaged over 100 yards per game. And look at some of these lines. 9 and 150, 11 and 159, 7 and 149, 7 and 84, 6 and 141, 12 and 192. That's catches and yards. Yeah, That's I know crazy. Sam Darnold is the guy. People were saying it should be uh, J.J. McCarthy. Sam Darnold's coming from San Francisco where he learned the Kyle Shanahan scheme. That's what Kevin O'Connell runs out in Minnesota. He's one of the best play callers. Me personally, I would go Amon Ross St. Brown because yeah. Jamison Williams is still the Lions wide receiver too. And I'll believe yep. it when I see it, when that guy stays on the field and is available. Yep. But Amon Ross St. Brown, 2.63 yards per route run. Anything above two is explosive. But let's just, the lines here and the consistency you get from yep. Amon Ross St. Brown. Six catches, 71 yards, one touchdown. Six and 102, nine and 102, yep. 556, one, 12, 124, one, six and 108, eight, 156 and one. 7, 112 and 1, 12, 106 and 1, 7, 144 and 1. And I skipped a lot of productive games. Yeah. This changes everything with Jamar Chase. I was all in on him. I thought things would be resolved. I thought he'd be a full go practicing with the team because you know he can execute. But also yeah. take into account the Bengals lost their offensive coordinator, who is now the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. I put Amon Ross St. Brown above Jamar Chase. I put Jeff Justin Jefferson above him. I understand the scared Sam Darnold. Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the league. They're the guys yep. ahead. Now, if Jamar Chase falls to you at eight or nine, then there's value there. I would take him over a Garrett Wilson. I would take him over a Marvin Harrison Jr., but I wouldn't hate that Marvin mm -hmm. Harrison Jr. pick. There's risk and reward. You may not win your league in the first round. I think you win it in rounds three, four, five, six. But you could yep. lose it with your first overall pick if yep. you reach in the wrong way. Or if you make a mistake and someone that's holding out and not in shape and then deals with the injuries down the road like Jamar Chase. That's where yeah. I draw the line here. But Amon Rod, that's a guy I would eye. Even A.J. Brown possibly, but I think I would go Chase over A.J. Brown. Bro, I, you're preaching on one thing you said. You can lose your league with your first round pick. And I almost have PTSD from this, I think. I, I for years... When he was with the Panthers, George, it was probably two or three straight years where I ended up with Christian McCaffrey as like my first round pick, and he just got hurt every single stinking bleep in time. And, and I never recovered from it. So I think you're absolutely right. I think that's gospel what you just said right there. Here's two more receivers I'm going to stay away from that are going to be later in the draft, but I still want no parts of them. Malik Neighbors with the Giants. I have seen enough now over the years with Daniel Jones and including this current preseason with Daniel Jones to confirm twice over that he sucks. He is one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. I don't even think he belongs in the NFL. So at this point, even though Malik neighbors, I think could be special I want no parts of him. The other one, Stephon Diggs. Now, he doesn't stink, but I don't believe his diva antics are going to work there in Houston. And not because he won't do them, but because they have other weapons. So, Stephon Diggs, if you're not an idiot face moron and you have any morsel of intelligence, which I believe you do, Went to University of Maryland. I mean, everyone from Maryland's a genius. Hey, Stephon Diggs, please just stay in your lane and win games, bro. You're not going to have the same numbers you had in Buffalo because you were the man in Buffalo. Now you're part of an awesome collective in Houston with an amazing quarterback who is the man. Play your position, bro. Stay in your lane. I think he will. So I'm not going to draft Stephon Diggs either because all those young receivers on, on Houston can ball. I might take 
one of them other boys on his team over Stephon Diggs, George. 